Okay, so we'll start off nice and slow with the factory I.O. We'll build up a scene and then we'll control it just with a two-wire control. So we'll go to the start menu, open up our factory I.O. This guy opens up uh, quite fast. There we go. Okay, so we're going to open up a new scene. So we're going to come here to new. Click on this guy and we're ready to rock and roll. We can drop in all of our components. So let's start off with a conveyor. Let's start off with a, a six meter conveyor just so we have some space to work with from beginning to end there. Uh, once we drop this guy in, we can take a look at the direction that this conveyor is going to go in. It looks like I can just make out the direction right there. So I'm going to double left click on the conveyor. Then when I right click, you can see that dot. So that's my point of reference and I can zoom in and there you can see that the direction of rotation of this conveyor belt will be from left to right. Okay, so once you've set that guy up and you are ready to rock and roll with this conveyor, uh, next thing is we're going to drop in an emitter. So this guy right here, and again, it doesn't show you the name, you have to look down here as to like right here, you can see capacitive sensor, wheel aligner, aligner number one, so the name will be right here. And if we go to here, you can see below that that is the emitter. So we're gonna grab that bad boy, drag it in and drop it onto our conveyor. Okay, that looks good. Let's zoom in and take a look at that guy. Looks good. And at that point it actually landed nicely. Okay, if we need to control that guy and move, you know what, I'm gonna leave that where, one where it is. Um, but uh, maybe on the uh, on this guy right here on the remover, maybe it won't land as nicely as that one did. Okay, so let's scroll out here and let's drop in the remover. So we're going to grab this guy and all these guys do is they drop in um, different pallets and boxes um, on the emitter and then they just disappear on the remover. Okay, so here you can see that the remover is sitting on the base there and I can't Ah, seem to get that onto the conveyor. So what we have to do is we have to hit V for vertical alignment and then we can click on this guy and lift it up. Okay, that looks good there. And then we'll let go of the V and we can grab it again and bring it over on top of the conveyor. Looks good. Okay, let's again double left click and we can zoom in there with our mouse button. And it looks like it's sitting nicely on the conveyor. Um, maybe we'll move it over just a touch. So move it over just like this. Finicky. Yeah. Oh, I had it. Come on. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And we'll look from this side. Everything looks gorgeous. Okay, so now that we've got those guys in place, uh, let's save this. So this is going to be our, uh, we'll, try, we'll call this two wire control. And we'll save that and that'll save to your scenes. Okay, so we have um, we have a number of different scenes that we can open here, right? Um, that are already created by Factory IO and anything that you save will be saved to your scenes right here. So there's two hour control and it actually, that's cool. It shows you the date and the time in which you created that. Okay, let's double click on that guy and we're back to the scene that we were on. Now I've just made a mistake and move that conveyor. So I'm gonna hit edit and undo okay so next thing we need to do is we need to control this so we can grab a push button but there's not much for the push button to sit on let's see well we can grab this guy right here but i want to add some other stuff on so um oh that's not even a push button if we look below that looks like a push button but that's a capacitive sensor there and this guy right here that's an inductive sensor okay so my eyes are going on me. Let's grab this guy right here, this electrical switch box, and we're just gonna drag this bad boy over and place it on the end of the conveyor. That looks good. Let's double left click on there and then we can pivot around and see how it's sitting. It looks nice. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in a start push button. So this guy right here, the start button, again, you can see the name below, and I'm going to left click on that guy Drag, drag it over until it drops. So we've gone way past. Okay, that looks good. 
Let's double click on the front face of our box here and see whether, oh, that looks cool. Okay, so you can see there that it has both the button and it has an indicator light that goes with it as well. So we have an input and we have an output that corresponds to this switch now. And that's all we need so far for our beginning program. So let's hit file, we'll hit save again. There we go. And at this point, um, we've got our emitter, which is going to emit the boxes on top of the pallets. And if we hit this start button, then we should be able to allow the conveyor to move over and it'll go to the remover there. So this is our first scene we're going to build up. Uh, we'd like to see the tags though. So all of these guys are the tags. Um, and so you can individually click on each of those guys and they will come up or you can go here and hit view and dock all the tags. There we go. So we have our emitter, remover, the conveyor, the start button, and the start button light. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to build a PLC program to control this, but we want to manually control it first to make sure that everything's rock and rolling the way that we want it to. So we're going to come over here, we're going to hit play, and now we're in the run mode, and now you can see that that pallet has just arrived with the box on top of there on the emitter. Um, you can see that the emitter is already forced right away. And you can see that the remover is forced right away as well. So the emitter and the remover will not be part of our PLC program, but we will have to make sure that they are forced within here to make sure that everything's working. Okay, um, we can then fire these guys on, right? So we can hit our start push button. Um, we can turn on our light there so we can force that. So you can see there that it's illuminated. I will unforce it and it goes out. Excellent, so we have control over everything. And then let's hit this conveyor and see whether these pallets go over to the remover there. So we'll force this guy on now. Let's turn up the volume so we can hear it. Okay. Another one coming in right behind of a different size box. And then when it gets to the remover, it just disappears. Cool, eh? So we're gonna build up on this and make some uh, some cooler projects. Uh, but for now, what we need to do is just set up a PLC program. I'm gonna use the Siemens Step 7 1200 in order to control this. But again, you can use any uh, PLC to control this factory IO. If it's not the prescribed drivers uh, that are right here, so if we go into File and Drivers, and we go to here. Um, if you don't have any of these guys, the Allen Bradley Logix 5000, Micro 800, Micro Logix, and all the way down, um, then you can make use of the Advantic USB uh, 4750, and then you can have any type of PLC connected into it. So um, in the shop, we also have uh, the Tweedo Suites connected into the USB 4750s. All right, guys. So let's now open up our Siemens PLC, our TIA portal, and we'll develop a program in order to get this two-wire control to work. Now, before we get started with our PLC program, we've got to decide our I.O. So uh, we have basically one input and one output, right? So we have the start button as an input. Um, well, maybe we could have two. We could have the start button light uh, turn on at the same time as the conveyor. Um, but in order to figure that out, we need to go to um, edit, no, file, and then drivers. Uh, and then depending on the driver that you're using, you'll choose either the USB 4750. In my case, I'm going to use the um, S7 1200. And just double check that whatever you're connecting to is actually wired up and turned on. And next thing we're going to do is choose the appropriate driver and then hit connect. See this is thinking about it. And then as soon as we connect, we'll have a green check mark right here. So right now I'm talking to my Siemens PLC. Okay, so um, we need to bring in our uh, our inputs. So we're just doing the two wire for now. So I'm gonna bring the input, I'm gonna bring the input into 0 0.1 because later on when I do a three wire, I'm gonna put it, uh, my stop push button on input zero. Okay, 
So I don't need to have any of these guys. They're going to be running in the background. So it's just simply the one input going to input 0 0.1. And then the output, again, the emitter and the remover are going to be uh, forced on through the program. Uh, but I'm going to have my roller conveyor as output 0. And I'm going to have my start light as output number 1. So we'll turn on both of those guys when we hit the start push button. Okay, looks good. So now, in my case, I'm going to open up my Siemens TIA portal now. Okay, so if you are using any other type of PLC, then you can just fast forward through the, um, the video here. Uh, but I'm going to open up my TIA portal and then set up a two-wire control for this guy. Okay, so I'm going to click here on Create a New Project. And I'm going to call this my two-hour control. And we'll hit create. Okay, and now that we're on to this window right here, we're going to configure a device. And we're going to add in a new device now. Okay, again, we have the PLCs, we have the HMI, we're going to do our PLC here. Uh, we're going to open up these guys for the Step 7 1200, open up the CPU, um, and I'm just going to do an unspecified CPU. I can choose um, exactly my PLC here, but I'm going to do an unspecified. And I'm going to tone out, and the PLC will actually send all this information into the TIA portal. Once I've chosen this, uh, I can. it's already chosen to open the device view, so I'm going to add this in. Okay, so uh, it says that the device is not specified, so we're going to now go and detect the configuration of the connected device. Okay, and then we're going to use the, uh, I'm using the Profinet uh, adapter here. I'm using the Surface Pro Ethernet adapter to tone out and see what's there, and we're going to just start a search and see what's connected onto the network. So it's going out to see what's there. Uh, it's found my PLC at 192.168.2.10. So each individual IP will be noted there. If it's not noted, then you can always give it an IP address on the next window. Beauty. So there's our PLC there. Uh, if we want to see that that is in fact our PLC, we can flash the LEDs and you can look at the PLC in front of you and the LEDs just below the Siemens sign should be flashing at you. Okay, I'm going to choose that one PLC there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go come down here and detect it. Okay, my computer is exceptionally slow uh, today but we should see an image of the PLC come in that is the same as the 1200. There we go. And again, if you wanted to see this um, in a decent size, then you've got to go to 400% uh, so you can actually see the PLC. Again, my computer is insanely sm slow today. There we go. And we'll scroll down and there's our PLC with our inputs our outputs there, um, and we've got our Ethernet connection there as well. Okay, so next thing we're going to go is we're going to go to our um, project tree. So we're going to come up here just above start to this arrow, and we're going to expand that menu there. And we're going to come down here to uh, program blocks. And then we're going to click main OB1 here. So we'll double click on this guy and we'll open up our main window in order to put our PLC program in. Beautiful. Okay, so all we need to do is we just need to drop in uh, a two-hour control. So we have that one, let's go back to our uh, factory I.O. here. We have that one start push button right here that we're going to press. This is a normally open 
push button. So we're going to use an XIC instruction here, or what they call uh, a normally open contact. So we're going to grab that guy until we see green. Let her go. Insanely slow. There we go. Okay. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our output. So we're going to put an output for the conveyor. And we're also going to put an output for the indicator light. So right here, I'm going to put another rung. And I'm going to put a separate output there. And that should be good. I don't think I need to tie these guys together. Okay. Looking at uh, my factory IO, let's see if we can make this smaller now. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. Uh, give me two seconds and I'll put them, I'll do a split screen here. Okay, beauty, we just got to make sure that we have the appropriate inputs here. So uh, input 0 0.1 is going to be the start button. So we're going to left click, sorry, double click on this guy. And we're going to say input 0 0.1. And then we can double left click on the side there. Obviously, that's not going to have a name yet, so we can name that with the start uh, button in two seconds, or we can just right click on it now, rename the tag, and then that guy is going to be our start push button. And that's our only input there. Our two outputs are the roller conveyor at Q0.0. .0. So we'll double left click on this guy, type in Q0.0. .0. Double left click to the side of it. And then this guy right here is going to be Q0.1. Double left click over here. There we go. And then the other way that we can add our tags in there, give me two seconds to bring up the other window there. So we've made our window here full screen now. The next thing we need to do is we need to come up here and we're going to split the editor space vertically. And when we do that, then it provides us with uh, the view of our PLC now. So what we can do is if you needed to bring these guys in, you could grab these and drag and drop them onto your main ladder diagram here. The way to change these tag labels here, one of the other ways is to double click on this. So double left click will bring up the properties. And for that guy, for Q0.0, if we take a look at our factory I.O., again, going back to the drivers here so we can see our I.O. And Q0.0 .0 is the conveyor, and Q0.1 is our start button light. Okay, so we'll come back to our portal here. And so Q0.0 .0 was our conveyor. Excellent. Looks good. And then we just need to change our other output. So we'll, we can minimize this again. And now you can see that it says conveyor run. We'll double left click on tag two. And this guy is going to be our start push button light. Beautiful. Okay, now you can see that uh, the inputs are here. There's a start push button right there corresponding to input 0 0.1. Uh, output 0, 0 is conveyor run, and we can see that that label is right here now. And output 0 0.1 is this guy right here, the start push button light, and we can see that it's tagged properly as well. All right, guys, let's download this into our PLC now. If I haven't mentioned it yet, we do have to remember to have the right settings in order to talk to the factory I.O., so I'm going to double left click on the PLC here, which will bring up the properties for the PLC. And if we go first to protection and security here, and we go here and look at our access, we're providing it full access. And if we scroll down here, we just want to make sure that uh, we have permit access with PUTGT communication from remote partner. Okay, you may want to save like a base program with all these settings already set up so that you're able to talk to your factory IO. Right now we can see that these are all 0.1, sorry, 0, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, we do have to offset the inputs though. So we're going to come up here. Um, we can look at the, the Ethernet address just to make sure that 
it's there. So again, 192.168.2.10, that's for mine. Uh, yours will vary as well which, with whichever one you're working on in the lab. And last thing we need to do is, easy now, we need to look at our inputs here. So we'll go to IO addresses here. And again, we're going to offset our addresses uh, by 10. So we're going to click on this portion right here on start address, uh, and we're going to change that to 10. And then we should be ready to talk to our factory IO. And you can also see that now that we've offset those by 10, that the label here for the start push button has disappeared because this is now uh, like the physical inputs are 10.0, 10.1, 10.2. So the label has disappeared, but it still corresponds to the inputs that we're using with the factory IO. Okay, let's download this guy now. Prior to downloading the, the program, we're going to download those uh, changes there. So we're going to go to download to device. Then we're going to download the hardware configuration to the PLC. Okay, next window we'll see is this. So we're going to load this. Okay, looks good. Then we're going to finish. Okay, looks good. We don't have any warnings or errors there. Okay, let's minimize that. Let's go over to our ladder diagram here and let's download this guy now. So by hitting this one, we're going to download both the software and the hardware now. So it's compiling right now, making sure that everything is cool and that I have all my addresses there and I haven't screwed anything up on my program. Okay, this one is usually not a big deal, manually synchronized uh, required. So it's just saying that there's a difference between what the PLC has and what's on my um, my program here on my computer. So I'm going to continue without synchronization. It says loading will not be performed because preconditions are not met. So I have to click on this, stop everything that's going on on the PLC, and then load this guy up. Okay, now that that's done, I can hit finish. You can see that this is going to start everything up on the PLC. Beautiful. Okay, so next thing we need to do, um, now that we've downloaded that to the PLC, we're going to go into monitoring mode. So we're going to click on our OB1 here. And then we're going to go into monitoring mode doesn't seem to be able to show us the monitoring mode and that's because we're still in the split screen so we're going to click on this and stop it from splitting the space vertically there we go and there's our monitoring so we'll turn this guy on and we should see that this turns orange and these guys start to go green to show us our logic continuity there we go. So there it's orange. So it's talking to the PLC and there's our logic continuity. It looks like it's just waiting for us to hit the start push button. So let's bring up our animation from factory IO. If at some point there you've lost connection to the, uh, the factory IO driver. So we're going to hit connect and we're waiting for a green light there. It looks good. And let's go back to our animation here. Okay. Let's split the screen with our portal now. Okay. We'll hit the play button. In order to get the animation going, you can see that the palette just came in with our box there. Okay, be careful. Previously on the video there, just a few seconds ago, I had the pause there. And so when I set it up and reset the animation, the palette was not coming in. So take away the pause. And then when you reset your animation, your palette should drop in there. Nice. And now the only thing that's missing is us hitting this push button here. When I hit this push button here, then it will turn on the conveyor and it will also turn on our start push button light as well. OK, 
Okay, hitting in three, two, one. Sweet, so you can see the animation rock and rolling there with different pallets with different size boxes going through. And this is a two wire control, so if I let go of that push button, then everything comes to a stop. Hit it again, and it starts up again. Actually, you can see on our TIA portal that anything that has continuity is going green. And right now, this push button is not illuminated whatsoever, but when I press it, it lights up, and the conveyor turns on as well. Sweet, guys. Nice job. So you now have set up a two-wire control. We can build this up slowly to add in more and more controls. Uh, if we zoom back out here, you can see that the uh, the remover right here is going to be taking each of our pieces, and as the pallet comes through, it will disappear here when we press that push button. Can I press it there? Yeah. So as soon as it goes from an arrow to uh, a hand, then you're ready to go. Excellent. All right, guys, if you got that working, nice job. Keep going in the playlist and we'll move on to the three wire control. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.